So today we're going to be looking at the colours and techniques I use to achieve the matte black armour for the Ashen Lancers chapter. I'm going to be working in sub-assembly, so the head, the right arm, the shoulder pads, they aren't needed as they're a different colour, so we'll just get rid of those. So here I'm just applying a few thin coats of Vallejo model colour black. This is for an airbrush, just making sure that I get full and even coverage. I'll be applying the next base coat from the top of the model. By doing it this way, I'm hoping my airbrush will do most of the work for me by creating some shadows under the knee pads and in the deepest recesses of the armour. The next base coat colour is a one-to-one -one mix of Vallejo model colour black and Citadel Skaven Black Dinge to get a real dark grey. Again, a few thin coats are applied through an airbrush, making sure I get a really strong colour. We'll need to use this mixture to fix any mistakes, and if full opacity hasn't been achieved, there'll be a difference between the dark grey I've applied by my airbrush and the dark grey I'll apply later on with a regular brush. So going back at the model again with Vallejo Black, we're going to be hitting the areas of the Under Armour and the Aquila. Now that the base coating is complete, we can move on to shading. This is a great way to make the details of the model and each armour panel really stand out. For my shade, I'm using Vallejo Black. I've just thinned it down to a wash like consistency without hitting me too. The style of shading I'm doing is panel shading or pin washing. Either way, essentially what I'm doing is adding dark lines into the recesses between sections of the armour or other details to give it more definition and depth. This is pretty much my go-to way of shading now. I used to coat the entire model with a wash and go back over armor panels. I'm sure this pin washing may take a little longer, but in my opinion, I get a tidy looking model doing it this way. So I want to go back in and strengthen the shadows of the model, paying particular attention to the knees and the backpack. I'll be using the same mixture as before, the Vallejo Black, thinned down with Lahey Media. So now we're moving on to one of my favourite steps to make this black armour really pop, highlighting, specifically edge highlighting. For the first highlight we're going to be using Citadel Dawnstone, as we're only using two highlighters for this armour, I'm going to really take my time to get those tidy crisp lines. And mistakes do happen, just take your time and don't freak out, I definitely didn't get all these perfect on the first try. When highlighting, I try to make sure my paint is thin enough to flow off my brush, whilst not being so thin that it requires more than one application. When highlighting knee pads or circles on the armor, I tend to break it down into quarters. I just find it easier highlighting this way and make less mistakes.
So to tidy up my mistakes, I just apply the second base coat color in a few thin coats to keep the finish really smooth. Now for the second highlight, I'll be using Citadel Administrator and Grey. I'll be using the dot highlight technique. This is essentially just hitting all the corners and the sharp edge of the armor with the lighter highlight color. Now for the fun part, the weathering. I'm going to be weathering this armor with scratches. I'll be using the same color as the second highlight of Citadel, a minister and gray. I'll give the impression of scratches and damage by painting thin lines and dots onto the armor. The gray has been thinned down quite a bit. It's just water, I'd say about two parts water, one part gray. And there we go ladies and gents, that's how I paint matte black armor. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. I haven't got a cool sign off yet, so uh, yeah, till next time.